Well, welcome back guys to another episode of Just Vanning It. This week, we're gonna do the reveal of our Vacationer Rough Rider. Um, I'm riding at the factory. I, oh, myself and Sue have not seen this van since we left oh, over a week and a half ago. So we let the boys get the work done on the, the caravan that they needed to get done. And um, we're here to pick it up and we're gonna show you what we've managed to create. We've been living in our van, our um, 186 vacation of Rough Rider, for what, five days now? Five days, five glorious days. We picked it up, or I picked it up on Tuesday. We brought it back to where we're staying. We packed it properly this time, got rid of stuff that we didn't need. As always. We're living in it. Huh? We are living in it. And um, a big, big thank you to the vacation crew for building us really what is our dream van. It um, is guys, honestly it is. It hasn't been long, only five days, but from what we've seen so far, we're absolutely over the moon. And not everything is gonna be everyone's taste and that's fair enough. Um, it's what we wanted and um, we're actually super happy with it. And um, yeah, we're gonna take you now, we're gonna show you around the van and also we'll, we'll, we'll point out things that we've upgraded from the standard Rough Rider. So this is not their top model. Their top model is the, the vacation at Dakar. Um, and um, when we're walking through, we'll explain why we didn't get the Dakar. Um, and um, yeah, so this is our Rough Rider 18 6 um, vacation. vacation at Rough Rider. Woo! All right guys, so we'll start with the chassis. We've got a Silver Shine chassis. It's an 18 6 um, chassis and it's a flat floor chassis. We don't have any of the wheel arches. Um, and I kind of like that too, we'll show you inside that, you know, your packing space inside the van becomes a lot more usable. So I really like that. Um, the chassis, so the caravan came in at 2679T and a max of 3.5 tonnes. So that gives us about 820 kilos of payload, which I think is quite, quite good on this, on this van. Um, so we've got a payload of 820. Underneath the chassis, we've got two 95 litre water tanks, so that's 190 litres of water, which is 190 kilos of weight. So a lot of people think that, well, I want more water, I want more water tanks because we want a free camp, we want a free camp. You've got to remember that that's a quick way to eat into that payload of 820 kilos. So for us, six days off grid on two tanks of water, we've got the cruiser as well, it's got a 110 litre water tank. We'll do that in another video. I'm going to do a rundown of the cruise in a few weeks' time. So if, if you haven't yet, subscribe to our channel. And that way you won't miss that video coming up if that's something that interests you. And we'll also show you how we transfer the water from the cruiser into the, the caravan. Underneath, we've got independent suspension by Elko. I think it's the Enduro uh, suspension. A lot of people have been asking why we don't have airbag suspension. Well, there's two reasons. The cost of it was $12,000. Correct me if I'm wrong. But... Um, also guys we paid for this caravan so we still had a budget in mind and we didn't think that was a priority that was one of our last things that we really wanted if we could fit it in secondly is the weight of the airbag suspension a lot of people get that a bit confused that um, you know it's between 70 to 100 kilos i do um, believe depending on if it's a single or, or, or dual axle um, so we went with the enduro independent suspension um, we've towed it up the road here and I've towed it from the factory and it absolutely tows like a freight train this thing like I've never had a caravan that towed this well so I'm super I'm super happy about that also we've got 16 inch rims with 12 inch drum brakes now the reason we went with drum brakes is because the um, Elko tow assist works with the drum brakes and we'll get into that also into another video because I want to tow this van for a little bit and um, that way I can give better feedback we wrap them in good um, BF Goodrich tires, so that was an upgrade to to this van from the Dakar. Um, we covered the water tanks. We got a 90, 95 litre grey water tank at the. So when you're in national parks and stuff, you can collect your grey water tank and you can dump it when you do the toilet at the same time. Guys, that covers the chassis. Now what we're going to do is we're going to jump up the front. Righto, we're up the front of the van and we'll start here. Don't want to bore you guys too much. We've got the DO35 Cruise Master Hitch, which is pretty cool. If you don't know, 
we feel that this is a great addition because it can turn 360 degrees and also up and down you get a better angle on your caravan and your car also if anything had to happen to your car your caravan hopefully if you roll it if you tip the caravan over the car will stay on its on its on its on its uh, feet uh, we've got the breakaway electric brakes so if the caravan is detached from the car for some reason it'll hopefully come to a stop in one piece we've got the 12 pin and also an Anderson plug to plug into the back of the car to run the um, DC DC charger which then runs the fridge <coughs> excuse me so the shine chassis put the deep shackle hooks up the top here which I think it's a cool little addition normally we have a little pin over here and they sort of hang there I don't know I like this up here it wasn't really a choice but like it Elko jockey wheel we've had the trail mate on our previous van and um, well I'm gonna roll with this because it came with it it's only a just jockey wheel to you know suppose the trail mate was a little bit easier to jack up but um, we'll roll with that see how we go with it two eight and a half kilo gas bottles up the front with a nice shield to protect the regulator and then Sue comes around this way come on dear got a tap up the front on the drawbar and also got a nice shield here to protect it from stones etc etc like that. I like the thought that's been put into that with a shield in front of the tap and the shield in front of the regulator it's yeah. just those um those small little details guys that some some people forget about that um well they've added to the van and it's a pretty standard feature so that's pretty cool up front the big black elephant this has now been a talking point in the factory we'll start this side soon um so I asked him to make this toolbox, it arrived, and everyone looked at it as if to say, what are you doing? Well, this is what we did it with. Open up, perfectly measured on a homemade slide. Out it comes. Ta-da! These rails hold 225 kilos, the boat motor weighs 48 kilo, so we're well within its um, weight limits, and it absolutely works a treat. The great thing about that is it protects the motor from stone chips. Yep. And it's also safety because safety. when you're not around the van, that's right. You can lock it up, and that's if anyone even knows it's in there. It's, it's at, it, yeah, it serves its purpose. So come around the other side, and we've got a couple of bits and pieces up here. Could you turn on the lights so we could have a little look see? No, I don't have any lights in here, darling. Oh, don't you? No, not yet. I forgot about that, to be honest. The biggest thing was we had to get it on and get the motor in, and it worked. I think I'll just go to Bunnings and get a couple of little lights that can, if we get somewhere or you want to do something at night. So, yeah, guys, I think that's uh, a toolbox well well thought of, well made, and it serves a purpose. It doesn't look too bad on the front, I, I personally think, because I think it all just ties in with the caravan. So, yeah. Up, up next is another tunnel boot, which is pretty standard on caravans. It's the big tunnel boot that rolls all the way through. Um, Nice addition, got a little light inside, so if you arrive late at night, you can see what you're doing. Just houses all of our stuff up the front, basically like a garage for me. Hoses, ramps, some tools. Tools, camp oven, and the, the trailer uh, um, tailboard with bits of the trailer in there. Awesome, and that goes all the way through, guys. Love the color of this van. We chose this to match the cruiser. I don't know, I like that. But I uh, love the decals on it, like everything's just come up a treat for us. Up next we've got windows, now we've got four windows around the van. You must probably see there's no window in the toilet. We'll talk about that when we get inside. Window, window, some vents up the top. You must probably ask him why they scattered a bit because the one is for the microwave. One is for the extractor fan for the stove and the other one is for the radio and the hot water unit so, and the, the internet Wi-Fi is inside there as well so you just those things need to breathe. Um, come on down, we've got our inlet, 15 amp inlet with our satellite option cable over there and then you must probably be thinking well what's that? It's a power to the internet which we're going to do another video on um, once we've tried it out and we get a feel for it. So we've only really been using it yesterday for Sue's food. Um, up next is a thread foot proper hatch for the fridge. Um, we went with this instead of the vents just because that you stop the dust from coming in when, you try, when you're driving on the unsealed roads and we've got a couple of those coming up. 
um, and you, you leave that open for the fridge to breathe and when you drive it actually you can see how it sucks closed so that's a pretty good addition to our vans but for us below water fillers front tank second tank um, 95 liters 95 liters and under that is your outdoor shower which a lot of vans come with we use it we've used it a few times not a lot but at least it's there to, if you have if you want to wash your feet or something like that. Great for when you have dogs and great for when you have kids. Yeah, I think yeah, if you come from the beach or something. Give it a little like, rinse off after yeah. the beach, get rid of all the sand. Like I can wash my fishing rods and my reels from it as well, although I've got the, the tap up the front, but it, it's an option. Um you got your water your mains water going in. There's the grey water tank just rolling out into the um, grass over there. We got your thread fit cassette. Unfortunately that's locked, but it's just your standard thread fit cassette. That you can pull out, obviously dump at a, a, a dump point. Next up, hot water unit, instantaneous hot water. This one, so you've got water for as long as you want, really. I think it's pretty cool. That's the side of the van completed. Sorry, we forgot one thing. We've got a track on this side as well. So if you wanted to put a security, uh, the privacy screen or a, a sunshade. For this side of the van, especially on the fridge up in the hot, hot, then you can put that shade and try and help the fridge to keep cold. Another addition, we've got lights on this side, lights in the front, lights in the back. So when you, I mean, we've used it once uh, when we got caught out on the beach that night at three o'clock in the morning. But when you, you need it, you when need you it. When you need it, you can turn it on, you can see what you're doing, half asleep as well. It's a pretty good thing to have. Um, it might look a bit gimmicky, but you know these things are there to be used when 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 the time is right and when, when you get into a bit of trouble so that's that guys come around the back all right guys on the back we've got a four a four bar rear bar is that the right word to use four bar rear bar yeah so in other words we can take a bit of weight on the back here so we've got the spare wheel up on the back and i've got these made up for the trailer which actually fits quite nicely this time around we try to do things properly and up the back, you got the safety dive camera and the back uh, real light, like I've just mentioned, when you're at night and you need some light, you can put it on. Um, also, the back suit comes pop around your head here. We've got the wood box. So if you're going around cutting wood, you got somewhere to put your wood. That's pretty much the back, guys. Got some grab handles. Um, and then you would see the old antenna here that's the um internet we're trying out um instead of the cell phone go so far so good so we're going to really test this um, internet out and we're going to do a separate video on that coming around this side this is where the, all the um exciting stuff is really in on a caravan because you don't really sit on that side of the van so at the back here oops let's go this around this way now they've used the space wisely um vacationer because you know behind the shower We've got this little area and it goes all the way to the top of the caravan. So you can store brooms, mops, fishing any, rods, fishing rods, anything like that at the back. But what we really liked about using the space is we've never really had anywhere for our chairs, the muck mat and um, our little folding chairs and all that. So we're actually using it for that, which is pretty cool. So the last van, because it was so small, when it rained, we never had anywhere to put the chairs. They either got wet or they had to go in the shower because they were wet and stuff. So now, it looks like it's going to rain. The chairs have got somewhere. The muck mat goes in, stays dry. Another Threadford vacuum seal. Vacuum seal hatch to house that. Also, got a light in there. So if you arrive night at night, turn the little light on and you can see what you're doing. Come around this way. Got the entertainment hatch. What I like to call the entertainment hatch. I don't even know if that's the right word for it. Um, TV mount outside, 240. 12 volt aerial audio generally you'll have another radio inside here but there's another upgrade we've done gone with a fusion system so we've got this fusion sound bar outside with the fusion head unit inside which is all bluetooth so i can all connect it with my phone and the tv goes through here and through my phone it can play up throughout the whole caravan but that's the little entertainment hatch we're going to see we've got another vent down here there's a reason for that vent is because the power system the 12 volt system sits underneath the bench inside and it needs to breathe otherwise the system gets too hot and it'll just shut down fusion light bar like our oh, fusion sound bar like i've just mentioned 
Um, you've got a 10 amp outlet over here, so you can plug your car in or you can run whatever you want to run outside. Another window. Oh, drop down table, which is pretty standard on caravans. Nice stainless steel finish on here. And also, I don't know if you can see, but we've got LED lights there, so you can actually see what you're doing. Those are absolutely a game changer. Yeah, so that's a. I don't think all the tables have them. Some do, some don't. But we, we've had it in all our previous vans and we actually absolutely enjoy it. At the top, you've got two um, lights, orange and white. So we've got insect, and then you can have them both on or one off and one on, just depending on what you want to have on at the time. We've got the door latch, door latch, and then we've got a double step into the van. That just shows how hard this van is because sometimes cameras don't really... Um, do it justice. Do it, do it justice, I would say. Um, so yeah, we can, you know, there you go. And it folds away nicely. And this is the reason, guys, you will see that these axles and the suspen suspension is actually further back in this caravan because on the 18.6, well, we couldn't bring it any more forward. Otherwise the door would be over here walking into the bedroom. So that's, it's very well designed for the size van that we've got, which is, which I think is pretty cool. Door into the caravan, grab handle on there, and then on above us, we've got the carefree rollout awning. Now we've had a rollout awning on the um, our first van, and we had the electric awning on our second van. I do prefer the rollout awning. This one's got his anti flap. Now, look, we've seen a few people with them, they don't work all that well, but it is a little, the wind's just a little bit like a wind's starting to pick up now. At least I know it's not going to flap around. I might look at putting a a center bar across there, drill a hole and put that in. Um, I might actually do that because that just stops and also water from sitting inside the, the awning. And then to finish up outside guys, come around The here. magic hatch. Here we are, the other side of the um, tunnel boot on the caravan. So we'll wheel it out. It's got a little light as well. Let's come around soon. Got a little light as well, which is pretty cool. And then, got the Ziggy slide, which is another thing I made up. I bought the rails, I've made it up myself. Now a lot of people say, why don't you just go and buy a fridge slide, it would have been easier. We did a little bit of homework. A fridge slide, the one we looked at at least, was 30 kilos. I built this slightly a bit more expensive than the fridge slide, to be fair. But it weighs 10 kilo. So there's 20 kilos of weight that we shedded. And it housed our Ziggy, brand new Ziggy. Oops, how does this operate? <laughs> there you go. Many a good meal to be cooked on that. And the reason why we went to the Ziggy, guys, I don't know, it fits in the tunnel bit without having to worry about the heart like the Weber does. We've had both. Hey, they both cook a good snag, good steak. That's, that's the main thing for me. It's not about brand or anything like that for us. It was just, it had to be practical and just work. And I think the Ziggy's are cheaper than the Weber's too. Anyway. Guys, that's the outside. I hope I covered everything. If there's any comments you want to know about the outside, drop them in. And um, I'm happy to answer them. But now, we're going to get into some exciting stuff. And Sue's going to show you what we've done inside. Come on inside. Let's show you the interior. So good to have a north to south bed. In our previous van it was east to west and I was climbing over Derek every night. This bed... Not that I'm complaining. <laughs> this bed is superb. I can walk up the side to get into it. It's got a um, mattress topper. Um, extremely comfortable and um, had a couple of good nights sleep on it. In terms of the van itself, great to have hanging cupboards again. We didn't have these in the Nova and um, Got all the clothes hanging up both my side and Derek's side. We've also got our reading lights up above the bed. We've got the cushioned headboard, which is schmick. What's cool, cool about those um, little reading lights 
they got a little USB underneath them too. They do. So you can charge your phone at the bottom of the USB. But we do have these little inlets um, all cut out. If you want to come around the side, Derek, and give everyone a look. So these were additional. They were an upgrade. But they house a 240 volt plug, a little light. They've got a 12 volt socket. They've also got a cigarette lighter, or sorry, a USB charger, and yeah. a 12 volt cigarette lighter. And what's really awesome, it's got a little light switch, so if you need to go to um, the ladies at night, you flick that switch and it actually turns on the light in the bathroom for you. Um, so you're not having to it's turn on It's pretty cool, that, eh? Very cool. Another thing that we've got, which we didn't have in the Nova, if you want to show them down the side of the bed, is we've got a little drawer and cupboard on each side. And you would be amazed how handy those are because when you don't have them, mm, it proves the problem. And the reason why I've managed to get a um, draw on that on my side of the bed is because of the hot water unit generally on our last vans sit there. So they've actually put that at the back of the caravan. So that becomes usable space for me, which is pretty cool. And if you want to look up, we've got um, the Dometic dust reduction system. Yep. Which is awesome. That's a that's an upgrade. It is an upgrade, absolutely. Yep. Um, something I really wanted for the dirt roads, just to keep the dust out. We've got a hatch with a light. It's also got a fan that either sucks out or blows in. We've got our two fans. Two Sirocco's. Sirocco's, that's standard with the van. Um, and we've also got, which Derek was really happy about, a smart TV. Now that is a... 24 inch 24 inch smart tv which is pretty cool um i don't have to plug my apple tv in anymore i can just basically go on there and we've already been watching uh, netflix on youtube on that so Absolutely. it's pretty cool and it works well actually yeah. i've heard some people say that um smart tvs don't actually work that well but um that one works very well and just the little handle for the tv area above yep and there's and um the power and um the audio and the aerial go in the roof and then our wind up aerial is just next to that so yeah your two big packing cupboards and they are a good size above the bed i've basically got all our lawn um clothing in there and windows either side which is fantastic the kitchen so first of all my countertops look at this waterfall countertop to be honest i didn't even know it had a waterfall countertop but that's probably the thing i like most about the van um, and some decent size storage. So it is an 18.6. One of the compromises with an 18.6 is the kitchen bench space is a little bit smaller than you'd be getting in a 19.6 or um, larger van. But having lived in the Nova, which was a 15 footer, we know that we can live quite comfortably with it. In terms of storage, we've got a great cupboard up there. We've got an NC microwave, which is a 23 liter. We've got the Fusion Radio, and up in this cupboard, I've got my daily coffee. You all know I've got a little coffee problem, um, but over and above that, we've also got basically all the plugs and the controls for the hot water system, etc. And there. the um, internet inside there as well. 100%. So that's where the vents were, guys. The vent for the microwave and the vent for that, and then also, if you can just show you, we got the extractor fan underneath. Yep, so the extractor fan just pops up. Down. It's got a light and obviously your different settings, which is fantastic. Now we opted to go for the same splashback on the top. We've also got what we call the black pack. So that was an upgrade on the van. Um, just with all your black taps and finishes, sink. Great storage in terms of your drawers. So you've got your two standard size drawers. You've got this, which I absolutely love, your pot drawer. Um, and one of the touches with Vacationer, which I thought was great, this is actually a fake drawer front. It actually covers the sink behind, but rather than just panel it up, you know, they gave it a good look. We've also got a drawer at the bottom that Vacationer had to work around for us because essentially you've got your piping running down on the right hand side, but instead of not utilizing the space, flip it up and there's a full pull out drawer. And it's pretty it, good, eh? And really good to access as well, which I thought was great. Close that flap up. Back to the spice drawer. Man, did I miss having one of these babies. All our cooking spices fit nice and flush. And um, 
couldn't be happier in terms of the actual design and layout of the kitchen. We opted to go for the gas top. I've always had gas burners, even in my homes. So we've got three gas burners, the electrical plate, but within 950 of the gas top. And um, obviously grill, and having had an oven previously, this was an absolute must for me. Um, particularly when you're in really bad weather, it's lovely to cook outside in the Ziggy, but it's a really good option to have the oven. And then you've got another flap down, um, where I keep obviously just, you know, bits and pieces in terms of the dustpan and brush, etc. Um, and guys, that's where the, um, so I just want to jump in, the, the flat floor. So just think like you would have had, you know, wheel arches to deal with underneath all this cupboard, which then becomes just usable storage, doesn't it? Yep. Now, could I tell you about my really, really large, um, but we go fridge. This is a 230 litre beast of a fridge. Um, fridge freezer. So up top, I've actually got space in the freezer, which is unheard of. Um, and it's been working like a bomb. And then down below the actual fridge area, you've got your fruit and veg drawers, loads of shelf loads space. Loads of room for more beer. Oh goodness, there we go. <laughs> and another thing that really suits me, predominantly because of my height, Usually we have the fr uh, fridge cupboard, or well, the cupboard above the fridge. This fridge is actually slightly elevated so that it's, you know, at a good height. And that gives me an entire pantry drawer, which pulls out underneath. And again, you know, I'm not reaching and lifting. And I can actually access everything quite easily. So very happy with that design. I must say, you know, with an 80 and 6, like, we managed to use all the space wisely. And... It's just the two of us and we fitted everything in you perfectly, Absolutely. didn't we? Around to the... Cafe style seating. So again, with vacation, we had the option. We could, oh, so we could even have the cafe style seating or we could have the um, L shape. I definitely wanted the L shape. Just, it opens up the flow and the space in the caravan. I also love that it gives you a movable table. So you can move it left and right. You can move it outwards, across, inwards. That gives you additional space when you're prepping meals. And also, I work full time on the road. You've got a great big countertop, nice deep benches. It was also designed with Sophie in mind. Um, so this would have been Sophie's spot, so we could both sit up next to each other. And this was an additional. Um, so we added this in, just a third uh, Sirocco fan, because it does get sort of quite hot when you're in the warmer climates and that's just a good relief. Three massive cupboards um, up and above the seating area which is fabulous and also a plug point up behind with 240 to run the laptops off. Now when we're off grid which Derek will tell you a little bit more with regards to the electrical system a bit later but we'll still be able to run 240 off the electrical system. Your USBs up under the lights and obviously your storage pouch at the back. And can I just say a huge thank you to Maddie and the team at Vacationer because we weren't expecting it, but they did personalize it for us with a little just banning it detail, which we were absolutely stoked with when we saw it. So thanks so much team, that's really sweet of you. Another nice window over there, obviously. Now you must probably be asking, we could most probably, why we didn't have the kitchen on this side and the benching on this side, well, you can see that bench ends there and the kitchen would have been slightly smaller or vice versa. So Again, anyway, it's, nice it's all about compromising, area. caravanning, 100%. I reckon. 100%. Up above, we've got the... Truma Aircon. That is an upgrade from the Bel Air. I don't know. I just wanted a Truma one. That comes in the Dakar. So what we did is we, like we said, oh, like I might have mentioned earlier, is we took a couple of the specs from the um, Dakar and added it to the Rough Rider. We've got another hatch directly above Derek. Fantastic for airflow and light. And if you want to come over this side. Now we're going to try and fit in the um, ensuite. Not together. On me throne, as Derek mentioned, we went with the Threatford cassette toilet. All shiny and new. Swivels. Fabulous. Nothing, nothing upgraded Can I there. just jump in here? Sorry, yep. love. So, originally, we had ordered a Nature's Head composting toilet to fit in there. But, due to some uh, opinions and some research, 
we decided to go back to the Threadfit toilet. No, so we went with that. No, sorry, carry on, darling. So a bit of an upgrade in the van. You'll see we've got a wall-mounted NCE 3kg washing machine mounted up and above the toilet because I didn't want to lose any of the space up above the basin. Um, and usually this van comes with, if you want to swing down and around, it comes with a big washing machine in this cupboard. We've actually left that for our laundry. So one of the things we've learned on the road is that there's absolutely never anywhere to put the laundry basket. It's in the shower, it's on the toilet, it's on the bed, it's in the walkway. So it's that was a pain. great addition for us. And also, you would have seen, the reason why we don't have the window above the toilet is obviously the washing machine is there, but we've gone and put the hatch in the top, which is uh, the same as above our bed. It sucks air out and it can push air in and it's a hatch and it's also got a light around it. Which is so, fabulous. Yeah. Our glorious bathroom, which I really love the look of. So we've got two great cupboards with storage up above it. Um, as mentioned, we've got the black pack. Love the mirror because it's got that soft lighting behind the mirror. We've got our plugs up the top there, 240 volt. Same kitchen top straight across. Um, or bench top, same as the kitchen, and backsplash, and loads of storage. We've got four drawers, um, which is actually more than we need. The bottom one probably doesn't have too much. We've got another hatch here for the toilet paper. We've got a hatch here with all our cleaning products. Do you want to tell them about the um, cupboard by the washing machine there, Don? Yeah, absolutely. So because we actually moved the washing machine over there, there would normally be a door in this cupboard that opens and closes. So Vacationer redesigned it for us to leave us with a nice shelf where we can keep, at the moment we've got the vacuum cleaner up there, but it's up to you. With the hatch on the side, we still have full access to, to the that, cupboard. To that cupboard. And it's a massive cupboard. We keep all of our linen in there, all of our towels. And that actually matches the hatch on that side, um, which is a really good use of space. Again, with the shower and the way that it's our, the shower, it utilizes the cavity so got cleaning materials and all our day-to-day -day products in there shower rail uh, hand towel rail standard towel rail standard full-size mirror on the door I might jump out you can jump in well, um, just to show everyone so guys just basically a standard nice big shower and same sort of hatch again with a fan that sucks in, blows out, does everything with a light in it, and also the black pack. So that means we get the black shower head. And to finish it off, sliding door. So if you're in the bathroom, you can close the door and you can be all private. So Rado, you must probably be thinking about the power. How is this thing powered? So Sue's, many, Sue's left this for me. Um, and you know what, I'm going to do a bit more research on it and we're going to try it out a bit more. Because since we've picked the van up, we've actually been on power. So I haven't really been able to give it a full on um, a go yet. But what I can tell you is, it's the system out of the Dakar, which is their top model. And we've put it in here. Why? It's because we love to free camp. Um, the people and the destinations you can get to is just unbelievable. So the system... In here, what I know is it's a Victron system. It's got a 3000 watt um, inverter with a DC, DC and AC charger along with its own MPPT solar charger. So we can run the aircon off grid and we have 600 amps of lithium stored underneath here, which like I said, I want to try the system out and we're going to do a separate video on the power system. Once, I think in about a month's time, I reckon, we'll be, get my, or even if, it, hopefully it's sooner, I can get my head around that a bit more um, in terms of how it, how long it lasts for. So yes, we've got a big power system and I just want to go for a couple of weeks and just get a feel of how much power we're getting, how much power we're using, etc, etc, before I can actually start telling about it. But that, all that system is underneath this bench, which is a pretty big system. Another thing. I can say what I do understand is because we've got separate uh, solar and DC DC charges, I'm charging the caravan via solar while driving, and the car 
is powering the DC DC at the same time and charging the battery. So we get a bit of a faster charge there. I can tell you we have 800 watts of solar on the roof. We wanted more because I'm going to do that whole power system video on what we've learned in two years on, 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 on power. Um, the bigger your caravans, the more space you've got to play with. The more solar panels you put on the roof, the less hatches you can get, blah, blah, blah. I want to actually do a big video on just that. But all I can tell you is this is what I'm trying to learn, is this is the little screen, Victron. And that's our sort of display. It tells us a water, it tells us a grey water tank. We had 100% charge. We're actually unplugged at the moment. I don't even know. Like I said, I'm trying to learn everything. So I'm going to spend a bit of time understanding the system. And we're going to do a full video on our system versus our old systems and our opinion on power that can possibly try and help you. So if you haven't yet subscribed, hit that subscribe button if that's something that you're interested in seeing because that's going to come up in a few weeks. I'm not quite sure when, but then you get notified when that video comes up, guys. From myself and Sue, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope we covered everything. If you've got any questions... Please don't hesitate to drop the comments in. Reach us, reach out us on our social media platform, and then we'll be happy to try and answer any questions. But also, thank you to Maddie and the team at Vacationer for an absolutely awesome caravan. This is really our dream caravan built, and we're so so happy with it. And we can't wait to go to the destinations we have planned this year. But also, guys, we're our ambassadors for Vacationer Caravans, and if you are interested in contacting Vacationer Caravans. Um, for to get some information about a caravan or wanting to purchase a caravan we got a, a, a link now that we'll drop in in every dis, every description of our videos a link that takes you to a form where you can fill out the form it goes to vacation of caravans they will then get the right representative in the right state to get into contact with you and you guys can start the conversation that way and um, I'm pretty I'm pretty pretty happy about that because it's not that complicated it's just a small little form you fill it out you send it away and that way people can get in touch touch with you and we are more than happy to answer any questions you have any questions travel guys. caravan this caravan life on the road and also what we're going to do is we're going to do a um a review video on our caravan as we go along i reckon we'll do one in about a month's time so like i said if you haven't subscribed yet and you're enjoying this type of thing please subscribe to our channel so that way you won't miss it we'll do a month and maybe Two or three months later, we'll do another one. And guys, like we said, we've actually paid for this caravan. So if something breaks, we'll share it with you. If nothing breaks, which we hope, we'll share that with you too. And we're going to share where this caravan can take us. So from myself and Sue, thank you for watching this build series and the reveal video. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. And uh, we look forward to hitting the road very, very soon and sharing this, um, the, the next plans we have for this year. So from myself and Sue, see ya.